Rockers and Recovery Media is dedicated to carrying the message of addiction recovery through music, news, events, and festivals taking place within and not limited to the clean and sober community. Hey, hey, John Hollis with Rockers and Recovery. I want to welcome everybody to the show tonight. Most importantly, if you're out there and you're listening, you are listening either on Rockers and Recovery at rockersandrecovery.com or on Blog Talk Radio or on, of course, over there at the, the Facebook page. Tonight's a great night. We have uh, two great people on with us. One of them you know is from self-esteem, and uh, our friend uh, is going to be, uh, Tony is going to be with us talking about what's coming up with Sober in the Sun. We also have uh, the Dope Man, the Dope Man on A&E, and uh, Tim Ryan, great guy, a.k.a. the Dope Man, has been... uh, putting out uh, some new information on A&E on how you can help others with a great new show. We're going to talk to him about that, too. If you're uh, in the area of rockersandrecovery.com, click on the About page, and you'll find out all kinds of information about us. We've been around since 2008 doing broadcasts and uh, media. We've got our own magazine over there. We've got, uh, of course, our live stream button. You can check that out. And upcoming events. Our next event is September the 9th, 2017. It's going to be at Kirby Park between 12 p.m. and 5 p.m. we got uh, four great uh, musical acts that are going to be there. And uh, we also have uh, a download there. So you can download it if you're in the tri-state area. We ask you to download the flyer and pass it out to your friends. If you don't have any friends, pass it out to some enemies. All we ask is that you get the message out there. It is free, and what we are looking to do is, of course, give helpful information to people in the community up there in Wilkes-Barre and in the surrounding areas, and we are working with three nonprofits in the area uh, that will be getting direct um, donations at the event for people to get help. Uh, One of them is already uh, accepting donations, and uh, I think we're upwards of around 2,000. You can go to rockersandrecovery.com and find out information about that and directly donate to their nonprofit. So what we're going to do right now is bring on our friend Tim. Tim, welcome to the show, and what a great show you had the other night. Your debut show was excellent. Thank you for being on Rockers and Recovery. Hey, I'm glad to be on the show. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> it's it's kind of overwhelming with uh, what's happened after the show. I mean, the it's uh, it shows people a true day in the life of of what I do, what I experience, and it's just not me. There's there's thousands of people out there trying to help the the people lost in addiction, but the aftermath i've had four to five people with me every day we've returned over 800 phone calls a thousand emails i can't tell you how many facebook messages but it's the same song no insurance can't get into treatment so we're doing the best we can to guide and direct these people in and uh we probably assisted i don't know 80 to 90 people get into treatment in the past two or three days Beautiful stuff, man. You know, when what brought the whole thing about was the death of your son. But prior to that happening, which is a huge loss, our condolences to you, but prior to that, you went through prison. You had a little bit of time clean, and then you went out, correct? And and you ended up in prison. Uh, I was, it. I was you know, I, I was in and out of recovery my whole life. You know, my first time, I'm 48 years old now. My first time in treatment, I was 21. And and back then it was cocaine and drinking. And I stayed clean about a year and I'd I'd go to 12 step meetings. But I'm the guy that thought I could get sober through osmosis. If I hang out with sober people, I'm going to get sober. And I hadn't had enough pain. So I would go in and out. And I was clean uh, for about a year when I was 32, and I took a guy to Chicago to move out of his apartment. His roommate was doing heroin. I tried one bag, and that took me down a 12-year road to utter hell and destruction. I was in prison in 2008. Uh, they gave me a year. I did uh, 30, 61 days and released me, and that was for four driving on revokes and going to get heroin. Hell, I got pulled over by the the same Chicago cop, eight months apart in two different cars. And that didn't stop me and went right, went, went right back. And 
I can remember at that time when I got out, my wife sat me down, and she said she had got a full-ride scholarship to nursing school. And at the time, Shannon was 40, 41. I, I said, you don't need to work. I'm, I make enough money. And she said, Tim, the way you're living, you're going to end up either in one or two places. You're going to end up back in prison, or you're going to end up dead, and we have four kids to take care of, and I can't rely on you. And she graduated three years, top of her class. I didn't even go to her graduation because I was dope sick. But uh, December 16th of 2010, I drove one more time. I overdosed while driving, hit two cars, put four people in the hospital, one being a nine-month-old baby. Uh, By the grace of God, they're okay. I knew I was going back to prison. I just didn't know for how long. Um, Got the best lawyer, said, let's beat it. He said, no, it's just a matter of how much time I'm going to try to not have you serve. But in the midst of that, uh, long story short, my son and I, who was 17 at the time, started using heroin together. Um, That's how we bonded. October 30th of 2012, I was sentenced to seven years in the Illinois Department of Corrections. The way they ran the case, I was going to, they give you three, three, and one. So I had to do three, but it's seven on the books. In Illinois, you do half the time, so I'm going to do a year and a half. When I walked into prison October 30th of 2012, um, I weighed 158 pounds. I had a $500 a day heroin habit and was drinking upwards of uh, a minimum of a fifth of vodka a day. And I that's where I surrendered, was in that prison cell at State Bill Correctional Center, defecating, vomiting myself for two weeks straight. By the grace of God, I got into Sheridan Correctional Center, which is the only drug treatment program within the Illinois Department of Corrections prison system out of 28 prisons, and I plugged into recovery. And and my cellmate and I, 18 hours a day in that cell, studied the big book, the NA Basic Text, the Bible, read hundreds of books. My wife divorced me in prison, lost our home in foreclosure, displaced our family. I displaced our family all due to my addiction. I, I always made a good living, but drugs were more important. I did 13 and a half months. I got out for the first time in my life, 13 and a half months clean and sober. My former wife and mom found me a little townhouse in downtown Naperville, Illinois, so I could walk to the Elno Club, I could walk to the train, and I could walk downtown. I have not had a driver's license in 16 years, but uh, I do have a full-time driver today in a company car, so that's kind of a perk of recovery. Um, but, uh, <laughs> you know, yeah, you're supposed to laugh at that. And yeah. I plugged into recovery, started a support group where I have families come with the people struggling with addiction. I set up a Man and Recovery Foundation, and on my 21-month sobriety date, my son Nicholas, who was 20, uh, died from a heroin overdose. And I can remember Shannon calling me. We shot to the hospital. We ran in. Tim and Ra- Shannon Ryan here to see our son, Nicky, overdose. And 30 seconds later, the chaplain walked out. I knew the cards were up. Wow. And I will ask you, I knew my son was dead. What was my next thought, John? You want to get higher or you want to go to a meeting? It had to be either one. If you're yeah, in the right space, and, and you and want I, to go I to a meeting. the ladder. Yep, and my next thought was I'll be at the 6 o'clock meeting that night, and that's what I did. Most people thought I wanted to use, and that obsession and compulsion had been lifted. And a week prior, I was at one of my second or third overdose awareness walks, and I met Congressman Bill Foster there. And Nick died on Friday, August 1st. Actually, Tuesday was three years since my son passed away. Um. So the following Thursday, I was doing a big Narcan training event. In the newspaper, was doing a big article. Well, the reporter caught wind that my son died. So she called me at about noon, and she said, Tim, you know, I'm really sorry. I'm going to cancel the story. I said, what are you talking about? She said, well, you're not going to go on with the training event. I said, I'm going to bury and have my son's funeral and service that Wednesday at the church, and Thursday night I'll be back there to to run the Narcan training. I said, if my son's friends and him would add Narcan, he could possibly be alive. So the next day in the front page of the Sun-Times, it said, you know, anti-heroin crusader lose the son to overdose. And unfortunately, in my son's passing, Nick really solidified and laid the road for what I do today. Um, in the three years since Nick's passed, I've attended 110 funerals. Um, I just lost two more friends that were in my support group last week. 
you know, I'm sick of burying people, but I want to be the guy that can help anyone. No insurance, state insurance, good insurance. I mean, my full-time job, I, I work for a phenomenal treatment center in Delray Beach. I've worked for a couple places. Um, but, you know, like after the pilot ran or, or the special, whatever you want to call it on Monday night, everyone that's called has no resources. So I want to be able to find resources and, and give people that opportunity to get, get what I have, to grab this gift of recovery, but there's so much more outside of treatment. So, yeah, it's kind of crazy. And, and it just started going, and I was approached by a, a producer who used to work for Oprah, and they were doing a documentary on uh, why the gangs are selling drugs on the south and west side of Chicago and, and why the middle class white suburban kids are buying it. And as they're interviewing me, my phones are ringing. And she said, what do you do? I explained, and she said, I think we could do something on you. So I signed with this company. We started some filming, and Unfortunately, it didn't go anywhere. They went out of business. I bought my rights to everything. And a friend of mine, Tiff, who was a producer, said, I've got a friend in California. We flew out to L.A. I had a meeting with Jason Hervey, who was a former childhood actor in the Wonder Years and stuff, and he's partnered with Eric Bischoff. I had a couple other meetings set. I met with Jason. I said, I like you. I signed on the spot. A couple weeks later, we flew to... Uh, Manhattan. I actually was at the State of the Union address. I was a guest there, and I took a train to Manhattan. We had one meeting with A&E. Two days later, they called and said, sign a deal. All last year, we uh, this time last year, we filmed the majority of that, and it's really powerful. Whether it goes to series or not, we don't know. Um, I was just honored that, that A&E was behind this, and, and there's a lot of buzz about it. Um, and it, it's some of the messages I've, I'm getting are overwhelming um, with people saying, you know, people need to talk about this. I know what you're going through, my kid, and, and the phones are ringing, and people are asking for help. And that's what I try to do is just get people to put your hand up and ask for help, and let's drop the stigma and all that other good stuff. How's that? Great message, Tim. Great message, man. And and I think what uh, what you're doing is absolutely shedding a light on things that people don't want to talk about. You know, people don't want to express, hey, listen, you know, my son, my daughter, my cousin, my brother uh, is having an issue. And and the, and the addict themselves, you know, feel so sh- so much shame uh, that they don't want to talk about it either. So you're shedding a no, light they, on, on yeah, something that's that, amazing. That, and I'm trying to, I, you know, I did a TED talk last year, a TEDx talk in Naperville, and, and my 18-minute talk was on the denial that there is a problem, but then also, you know, the people in recovery that, that don't want to come out. You know, we've got 23, 24, 25 million people in, in long-term recovery, but they want to hide in the rooms, and, and I'm all for I, I attend a 12-step base program, and it's not for me to break anyone else's anonymity, but we need more people coming out and saying, hey, I, I, I'm a rocker, and I'm sober, and I'm a doctor, and I'm a judge, and I'm a janitor, and I'm a school teacher, and I'm a plumber, and mm-hmm. I'm Joe next door, and, and I'm sober. And, and start, I think things have got to change because this opiate epidemic is just – you got two choices. You get sober or you're going to die. You might pass jail or prison in the interim, but those are your two choices. And uh, it's just getting worse. It's getting much worse. Tim, great, great message, like I said. And I think that people need to find out more. Where can they reach you and how can they find your information online? They can uh, go to my website. It's www.am. I R F is in Frank dot org, a man of recovery foundation, or they can go to book Tim dot com and it's all out there. I, I speak all over the country. I run community forums. I have a program I do called the cop and the convict where we actually educate parents on cell phone monitoring software, computer monitoring software, how to drug test, why to drug test, but what plan of action to have in place. And then we'll sit there and I'll stay there till two in the morning guiding and directing parents. And, and it's the same situation, no insurance, state insurance, good insurance. And here's your options and here's the support groups and here's what you need to do. 
And that's mm. my story, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> well, here's the cool part. If you're in... <laughs> If if you're in South Florida, November 10th and 11th, in the Pompano Beach area, Rockers and Recovery is putting on a festival at the 101 Club. It's a music festival. And a meet and greet the night before. So the meet and greet is on the 10th. The festival is on the 11th. Tim will be in town, and he will be speaking at both. Uh, we want to welcome Tim to both of our uh, meet and greet and festival because Tim, you know, this is the message that people need to hear. Yeah, and I'm truly honored to come down and, and be invited to be a part of this. Um, it, it's just carrying the message and letting people know there's hope out there. And uh, you know, the, the funny thing is, everyone thinks I've got this glamorous life. And I was meeting with the treatment center in Chicago today that with the CEO who taught at Northwestern University, and they deal with a lot of high-end mental health clients. And the guy looked at me and said, how do you do it? I said, what do you mean? He said, I've never met anyone that truly deals with more carnage and death than you um, and, and heartache. And I said, look, I've got a good therapist. I surround myself with a good group of people, and, and I keep recovery first, and I just follow God's lead. And he just said amen and gave me a big hug, and, and that's it. So that's all there is to it. There's no hidden agenda. It's, it's just I, these phone calls I receive break my heart. I wish to God I, I had an unlimited bank account to where I could just help all these people. But uh, I'm finding more resources, and I'm, I'm going to Colorado to look at a facility that's got 140 beds, and it's absolutely free, and they do manual labor and get free treatment. So Hey, you want to get sober, there's opportunities, and we'll find them for you. Good stuff. You can check out Tim at Tim Ryan from Dope to Hope. That's on Facebook, at Tim Ryan from Dope to Hope. Check him out there. Check him out, of course, uh, at his website. And, uh, Tim, we'll have you back in the future as we get closer to the event, so that way we can talk about what you're going to be talking about, and we can go through uh, step-by-step But you know, how people uh, can, you know, help uh, their loved ones or help themselves. Absolutely. Truly an honor to be on. Keep doing what you're doing. Uh, don't drink, go to meetings. Have a blessed evening, okay? You too, brother. Much love. Thanks, Johnny. See you, bro. All right, guys. Tim Ryan, dope man. Tonight we got a really special guest on, too. And Tony has been around Rockers and Recovery since almost the beginning. I think uh, we started, well, we we did start in 2008, but we started the concert series and festivals in 2011. And Tony came down to the first festival in 2012, and hence we have done, uh, he was at Maine, Love of Recovery this past uh, year, a year ago, August actually, a year ago this month. Uh, prior to that, I think it was 2012, he was in um, Connecticut with us doing a show. We were doing a live show in Connecticut. So he's been around Rockers and Recovery, uh, the music aspect of it for a long time. And great guys at Self Esteem, and let's bring Tony on and talk to Tony tonight. Tony, good evening. Thanks for being on the show, brother. Hey, John. How are you, buddy? Good, man. Hey, listen, you know, you've been around the whole music thing for a long time, music and recovery. And uh, in 2009, you were up for a nomination for a PRISM Award. You've been beating the bushes with music and recovery and helping other people since uh, the early 2000s. Tell us about it. Well, I believe, didn't we hook up, I think, down at Key West, John, if I'm not mistaken? Um, was that, that was, that was before. I think the first interview, um, yeah, actually, you know something, I think the first interview I did with you was in 2008. Yeah, yeah, down at, at down at, at uh, the festival, Key West, down at Key West. Yeah, 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 absolutely. So you were, you've been well, kicking it for a long time. Oh, well, yeah, we've been around for a, quite a while, you know, I mean, like, uh, I, I didn't get a chance, I'm sorry I didn't get a chance to hear um, the previous caller, I just, 
just got in from from Worcester. I uh, had to go to a, a board meeting for Sober in the Sun. So I just made it home in time, and I said, uh-oh, i got to call John. So, <laughs> so um, yeah, it's... it's what's uh, going on with Sober in the Sun? Well. That's some, that's, what's going on with Sober in the Sun? Well, Sober in the Sun's on Labor Day weekend. It's a four-day music festival. It's actually... Uh, it, it's it's an everything festival. It's just uh, just for you know people in recovery and people that that uh, want to find a new way of life and and um, it's a it's a drug free and alcohol free festival and I believe we just added a day to it so it's going to be a, a four day festival. We have music, we have uh, workshops, we have canoeing, we have kids activities. We have teen dances, adult dances, uh, camping. It's it's just an awesome event. Uh, I missed you last year. Um, was hoping hoping you'd get up here this year to check it out. But you're welcome any any time. You know that. And um, if you go on if you go on to soberinthesun.org, dot uh, org, you can get your tickets now uh, before it's too late. And then uh, I think I think there's a a big discount if you go online, and then there's a certain cutoff date that uh, that you have to get them at the gate, and it's like ten dollars more or something. But um, it's 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 just one of these things that I I've been attached to for for many years. Um, uh, there's that, and there's 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 all kinds of these these uh, recovery events popping up, and and you know, John, with you and your your uh, organization down south you know it's it's just starting to grow like wildfire you know um these recovery events it's it's like well you know when when we got clean and sober we said now what are we doing and um i i found i found i found plenty to do (laughs) you know um yeah man i mean hey listen there's so much out there to do and to to tune into and to, you know, just, you know, focus on and, and, and go at it. I mean, listen, you know, there's a lot of hope in, in what we do. And, um, you know, I remember the first show we ever did was, you know, February, 2011. And I'll remember, I'll never forget it. We open all our stuff up to the public. You know, it's, uh, you know, it's not a 12 step organization based event. So what we do is invite people from the recovery community, but, we had somebody that was a doctor at a hospital that happened to be living next door and came over and found out what it was all about. And he happened to be the head psychiatrist at uh, 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 Imperial Point, Fort Lauderdale. And he came up to me and Lori after the show. This was our very first show, and he, and, he, and he had tears in his eyes. And he said, you know something, I want to thank you. He goes, because I every day I go to work and I patch up alcoholics and addicts and send them out onto the streets. He goes, and, uh, you know, I never see this end of it. He goes, and you guys just made my my whole weekend, and it makes, makes me want to go back to work on Monday and help others. That was a huge yeah. thing. You know, 27 yeah. concerts later, festivals later, it, it, it gets into your soul that, hey, listen, you can really carry a lot of message through music and through just, you know, having a cool time and hanging out and hearing a message of hope and, and education, and it's just good stuff. Absolutely, and that's, that's where it all started for me, you know, when I got sober. I, I think me and my wife, Lori, you know, I, 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 I was at this uh, um, meeting, and, you know, I couldn't, I, I didn't want nobody to know my stuff, you know, because they'd think I was crazy, you know. So, so I kept my mouth shut, you know. And, and finally, I ran across somebody speaking at one of these these uh, uh, twelve step meetings, and and the guy was sicker than me, and I latched onto him, you know. He was a musician, and I was a musician, but I never had any any instruments to play because I always sold them for drugs, um, you know. So. So when I got clean, this I heard this guy speak. He says, "Why don't you uh, hang out with me and we'll play a little bit of music?" And you know, so I did. And uh, you know, I took up skydiving. Uh, me and my wife went down every weekend and went down in here in Ellington, Connecticut, and uh, spent the whole summer jumping out of airplanes and 
and that was uh, that was quite the crazy thing to do. You know, I at the point in time that I took that up, uh, I was newly sober and really didn't care too much if my shoot opened or not. So I just did it, and then it became really fun, and I ended up getting my license and and uh, and. Uh, you know that was that's that was when I started realizing how fun recovery can be. You know, I started going to this open mic at the Windsor Recovery Club in Connecticut, <laughs> and uh, you know, I played there for the first time, John, and and I was so nervous playing in front of a crowd. I had my harmonica thing on, and I and I ended up uh, singing into the harmonica and blowing into the microphone. And I got my mustache, mustache stuck on the mic. And, uh, you know, it was in front of about 100, 100 people. But that was the beginning of, of everything. And uh, that's where I, I ended up uh, uh, coming up with the self-esteem, me and my partner, Dale Keitlinger. And, and uh, <clears throat> we just uh, started as an acoustical duo in recovery. And we started uh, going around playing cover tunes at little coffee houses and uh, I got a little tired of that and so I started writing and and um, you know that's that's when it kind of took off and, and I started finding other players in, in recovery you know and and um, so I wrote a bunch of music and sent it out to LA to, to the prison wards and and uh, in 2002 we got nominated for a prison award. So we flew out there um, and, and we ended up just getting a, a, a merit a certificate of, of merit um, that year. And then in 2009, we had that lost recovery CD that um, I wrote and, and we sent that in. And, and of course us, us and Richie Supa, uh, you know, it was the first time they had a tie at the prism awards, you know, for the music. Wow. category wow. and um, so we both walked away with the prism award it was it was really cool you know oh that's very cool it, man very cool yeah you know it was just uh just an awesome thing you know uh little old me from connecticut going out there and and uh you know it, it was it, it was an achievement something that that i never thought i'd be able to do and, and um and we're still at it, you know. We're still at it. We don't play as much. I got the grandkids, and I'm having a blast with that. But um, we're still at it. We'll be at Sober in the Sun. <laughs> we're, lo- we're loving it, man. We're going to try to come yeah. up um, a little bit early because we're, uh, we're doing the event in Wilkes-Barre on the 9th. So you guys are the weekend before. Oh, I'd love it. Oh, brother. who's playing there? By oh. the way, you got any? Who's who's some of the people that are playing there? Well, well let me tell you, I have um, Johnny Pressness. I these these are all local bands. Um, yeah, Tattoo Cowboy, Johnny Pressness, The Loomers. Uh, we got Rattling Windows, Glenwood Mills Band, uh, Jeffrey Allen Shaw Band, <clears throat> Bonnie Lee Panic. She's coming up, coming out from uh, Nashville. She's a good friend of mine. And uh, Montgomery Delaney from New York. He's uh, he's a singer songwriter. He's he's an ex. He's seven foot tall. He's he's huge. He's an ex uh, New York City cop and an, an ex marine. And now he's an attorney and a singer songwriter. And he's the funniest guy in the world. But um, it's just and it's all recovery. These are all recovery people, uh, recovery bands, and and it's just uh, going to be an awesome time, you know. Um, I mean, give the information it, you know, again, last so that way people know. Time. What's that? Give the give the information again so people know where it's at and and, and can go to the it, website. It's, uh, if you go to www.soberinthesun.org, uh, you can check it out. Check out video. Check out the pictures. Uh, there's a mission statement on there. There's tickets for sale. You can contact me. Um, my email is right on the front page. And, um, any 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 information you need, you just email me and we'll send it to you. But uh, there's plenty of motels in the area, and it's a 400-acre Boy Scout camp, and you can camp anywhere on the 400 acres for four days, and 
we have a main stage all weekend, all weekend, and we have coffee house entertainment. Um, like I said, teen dance, adult dances, children's activities, and it's just going to be a blast. Um, we look forward to it every year. And you know, that last year, um, well, you, you know, I had the uh, liver transplant last uh, last February first, and um, mm-hmm. you know. I thought it was going to be my last time doing it, you know, just because uh, it was, that was a tough thing to get through. And, and you know what, we're, we're, uh, we're on a rebound and we're, we're good as gold, man. We're, we're good as new and we're, we're headed out there. I'll be going there a week early and setting up the RV and setting up the stage and getting everything ready. And, and I'm really looking forward to it this year. You know, if I, if I had the time, I would be, I would be going out to Pennsylvania to to see y'all out there because that's a nice little ride for me. You know, it's not too far, but um, I'll still be probably be at Silver in the Sun cleaning up. <laughs> you know? Yeah, that's how that works, man. When they when they end, you know, everybody goes home, and then you're there for three days. <laughs> yeah, well, I, some of the guys are there for more than three days. They're there they're there for a couple of weeks, you know, and, and God bless them. They do it every year after year. You know, but I don't know, John. It just, I, I really couldn't think of a better way to spend, spend my time now. You know, I was down in Florida not long ago, uh, seven months ago, um, in West Palm Beach looking for my daughter. Um, you know, you, you knew about that. And, and um, <clears throat> uh, she was not doing good at all. And, and you know, today uh, uh, she's seven months clean. And uh, wow. she's doing great. She called me today. She she just got out of treatment, um, you know, she, last week. And uh, she called me today. She has a job. She looks great. Uh, she's doing good. So God is good. I mean, you know, there's something that I thought seven months ago, I, I thought we were going to lose her to, to uh, the opiates, you know. And um, it just goes to show that never give up. You know, it's hard because people say tough love. Um, if I would have stuck with the, I, I can tell you this, if I would have stuck with the tough love thing and just let her hit her bottom, she would have died, John. You know, um, and, and I had to say that. You know, a lot of people say you have to let them hit their bottom, but uh, I, I don't know. You know, for me, I had to intervene because nobody else was. And um, when an addict is that down and that low and on the street, and they they don't have a choice, you know they they need to, uh, you know they need they need to get high every day and they have to do what they got to do. So, you know, with the fentanyl going around, John and and all that stuff, you know, it was time to intervene. <laughs> but you know mm-hmm. what? It, it, it's a great thing. Uh, you know, we didn't give up on her. Nobody gave up on me, so, and I'm here today. Yeah. Yep. You know, so. Hey, hey, you know something, um, and you're absolutely right. You know, guys like us, we made it through uh, hell and back, and, you know, there were people that should have given up on me, right, in my mind, but they didn't, and they showed me the kind of person I want to be today, and that's not to give up on anybody. If there's breath, there's hope. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, it's just a scary thing out there. You know, out here in, in New England, you know, people are dropping like flies all over the country, I'm sure. I'm sure it's not just New England, you know. And, um, you know, putting a face on recovery is, is a good thing. And I'm glad that you're doing this. Uh, you know, I, I'll always I'll always be there to, you know, share my story and share my message for anybody that needs it. Um <clears throat> you know, well, I appreciate I, all I, you do. You know, everything that you do in the in the community. Like I said at the very beginning, you know, you were one of the you know founders of going out there and putting music to recovery and making it special and making people, letting people see you through your music and using your music uh, to be able to to give hope and to share share love you know it was a it was a great yeah. thing you know and it still is but it's what you do like is you, amazing it's people like you that gave us a chance you know it, 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 it i remember my first festival it was half month's over festival and 
and it was just me and Dale, and we were an acoustic duo, and they called me up and says, we want you to come play at our festival. We were so excited that we rented a bus, you know, one of those 40-foot long buses, and uh, we had some CDs made and T-shirts, and we went pulling into this festival with, like, uh, like some kind of Rolling Stones or something. And so we got there, and there's this big stage, and, and we went r- walking up to the guy and says, the music director, and says, so when, when are we going to be playing? And he goes, well, you're not going to be playing on this stage. You're, <laughs> you're going to be playing up in that building up there. And there was a little, little like, cabin way up on a hill, like a small, almost like an outhouse. And um, it was their <laughs> coffee house. So I said, oh, well, that's fine. You know, we'll, we'll start this year, we'll do this, and then maybe next year they'll put us on the main stage. So I says to the music director, what time are we playing? And he says, well, two in the morning. And I went, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so we went all the way up to New Hampshire, and we played at two in the morning for four people. Um, and uh, one of those people in the coffee house listened to us uh, happened to be sober, uh, a music director that couldn't sleep that from sober in the sun. And um, mm-hmm. he heard us and laughed at us and seen that we were new to recovery and seen that we were fun and and made mistakes. And so he, he booked us for Sober in the Sun. And that was, what, what, 20 years? That was 20 years ago almost, I think. You know, and wow. And uh, we're still there. We're still there playing, you know, and it's, it's part of my recovery. I, I can't stay sober on music, but uh, it's, it certainly helps to have these events to go to because next year I want to go to it. And if I use, I can't go to it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So um, yeah, it, it, it's certainly a deterrent to stay clean, to have events like this. Um, and, and uh, you know, we have a blast. I mean, we absolutely have a blast. We've met people, you know, all over the world from, from these uh from these events. My network is huge and, and I love it. I don't have yeah, any it's amazing, people. Isn't it? Yeah, I don't have any friends that use it anymore and it's that's kinda weird. It just happens, you know. And uh, well you know what I'm saying. You know? Yeah. Man. I love I love it. I wanna thank you for being on. And we want to bring you yeah, back in the future. And, you know, if you guys are going to be doing some music, I'm going to be uh, playing a couple of tunes after this uh, from the band, uh, from Self Esteem. Mm-hmm. Selfish well, Steam is what it is. Well, if you get okay. up here, John, uh, if you get up here a week early, let me know. And come on up to the festival for a day at least. You know, you and, you and Lori, come on up. Yeah, actually, you know something we can build that in. I think because we were we were planning on coming up like on the, I think the fifth or the sixth, which uh, yeah. could actually work out to you know I could you know go up there first and just come back down. That wouldn't that wouldn't be a bad uh, bad little trip. So all right, cool. This is uh, this is all right, good my stuff. Friend. Tony, well, thank you for being uh, on the show with us. Talking to you and I appreciate what you do, buddy. And and uh, we'll see you in three weeks if you come up. You bet, man. We're looking forward to it. All right, my friend. We'll talk to you. Say hi to Lori. Okay. Bye-bye. All right, guys. There you go. We have a great show tonight. Our friend Tony from Self Steam. And then, of course, uh, Tim Ryan, dope man. You can check out Tim Ryan on A&E. Just uh, go and you can actually search it. Put in Dope Man in your search engine. And uh, it'll come up, and you can actually watch it on uh, A&E Network. And just uh, put it into your browser on your TV, and it'll come up. And so you can check out more Rockers in Recovery by going to rockersinrecovery.com and clicking on the About tab. And there is a list of different places you can go right from there. You can go to our podcast. You can go to our live stream. You can go to the magazines. You can go to our different social network sites. Check it all out right there at about. And I'm John Hollis. This is Rockers and Recovery. We want to thank everybody for being a part of the show tonight. And, 
if you're out there and you're sick and you're suffering, you don't have to anymore. There is help. And uh, you can check that out uh, by going to uh, the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Administration in Washington, D.C. It's called SAMHSA. Check that out. And uh, we want to thank uh, the sponsor of tonight's show, which is Clearbrook Treatment Centers. Clearbrook Treatment Centers have been around a long, long time. They're uh, part of, uh, of course, uh, the Wilkes-Barre crew and great people. And we ask you to, uh, uh, you know, check them out at clearbrookinc.com. And you can also, uh, if you need help, you can give them a call at 888-414-4209. Again, thanks for tuning in. Love to all. Play with me and you'll pay the price And I'm not ready, willing, or able I take a chance and I roll the dice Just like candy in a store And I keep going back for more Up all night they see the sunshine Walking out without a dime At first you're up, then you're down The stakes are high, you just lost Waking up to the sound The dealer tells you what it just cost All I want is a little freedom all I need is a little break Give me one more chance to break even And how much more can I take? Just like candy in a store And I keep going back for more Up all night then see the sunshine Walking out without a dime Rockers and Recovery Radio is based on opinion only and is not meant to treat or diagnose any health or mental health issue of any kind. If you feel you need help for any health-related issues, please contact a physician or mental health professional. The opinions expressed by our guests are not necessarily those of Rockers and Recovery. Okay, round two. Name something that's not boring. A laundry? Ooh, a book club. Computer solitaire, huh? Ah, oh, sorry. We were looking for Chumba Casino. That's right. ChumbaCasino.com has over 100 casino style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. ChumbaCasino.com. No purchases, over by law, 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details.